Hello, pet lovers. How in the world are you? Today, we're going to talk about preventing disaster and danger and dis catastrophes in our home with our uh, pets as they try to surprise us with antics and, um, and their behavior and the like. So dangers in the home can be divided into indoors and outdoors, eating stuff that they shouldn't get into, and extemporaneous um, help, so to speak, or unexpected events from strangers coming to the house, family, friends, neighbors, and service personnel, and the like. Um, for example, indoors, you have regularly scheduled people coming to the house. Might be a housekeeper, might be an exterminator, um, could be your best friend coming over for a cup of tea. Ingress, egress from the house, doors are open. Are the dogs and cats safe? Do they have to be put away ahead of time? What uh, type of procedures are in effect? Everything's probably just fine if you are home at the time. What happens if you're not? What happens if you needed to run an errand or you told um, uh, your best friend to come over at noon on Tuesday and you had a toothache over the weekend, got a dental appointment for Tuesday morning, got in and got your toothache, and all of a sudden at one o'clock walking out of the dentist's office, you remembered, hey, I was supposed to meet Betty at the house today for lunch. Maybe that's not realistic about having Betty come over today for lunch in COVID, but you got the point. What happens if um, your son, relative, friend, um, housekeeper that was there opened the front door? What um, type of issues might you be able to prevent. We're gonna to try to think through those as things come along. You have people coming in like exterminators. Sit down on your list right now and write down the various possibilities of what regular people are um, circulating to the house and what might be a schedule that you can anticipate and share with others that will keep everybody, mainly your pets, safe and sound. You'll have tons of unscheduled events, repair personnel. Will you be able to meet each repair personnel or will you have a friend or neighbor? A lot of times, uh, um, I remember before we moved to Orange, we had a really good neighbor and um, they would be available to have the washer repair person come in and take care of things. And we had to make sure that things were secure for all those because of the dogs and the cats floating around the house. Delivery personnel, sometimes they unexpected, no longer today, but in years past, um, they would shove stuff inside the front door. Could the cat, dog, somebody escape when they do that? Maybe that things need to be more secure. Um, outdoors, service people that are regularly scheduled, pool people, gardeners, a lot of times the pool person or the gardener has their own key, has their own access to the, to the pass gate number and they come in as they please and they're supposed to close the gates and close the this and close that. And they do most of the time, every time. I can tell you that in years of having a pool service and in many, 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 many years of having a, a gardening service, Gardeners do not necessarily close every door, every time, every gate, every time, every time they go. Why? Well, they're busy. Um, the main gardener probably will be just fine. They hire people. Sometimes the, um, how do I want to say this and be politically correct? Hmm. Probably can't be politically correct. Sometimes the teenage kids working for them are just clueless. Just clueless. I mean, the dogs can be running around. Um, they open the gate, got a problem. Um, so having a schedule that you know is happening, having a preemptive keep the dogs locked in procedure is extremely, extremely important. Meter readers, meter inspectors, these guys don't like to wait at the gate waiting for you to open it. Um, I don't know if you've negotiated that with yours. We tried that when we moved to Orange. That didn't work too well. They were, they were in and out and down the street. And when the meter doesn't get read for a period of time, they just automatically decide that you've used about five times more fuel, five times more gas, five times more elect electricity when they estimate that you've used. And your bill goes from, well, pretty good. Well, not that good. But 
um, expected to way, what a big surprise. So I remember we actually had to move one of the meters, as I recall, so that they could actually read it and see it with a telescope. Uh, yes, they carry telescopes and they're peeping over your fence to see your reader, but they could actually see it and read it with a telescope so that uh, they didn't actually have to come on the property. Neighbors, wildlife, birds, rodents, opossums, raccoons, time change, weather, plants grow, seasons, foxtails. Wow, that's a mouthful, one at a time. Um, neighbors, many of us have great neighbors, that's good. I have stories all the time, once a month, of clients with evil neighbors, evil neighbors that um, mess up their fences, evil neighbors that throw things over the fence, um, maybe just not so evil neighbors, but they don't care what falls over the fence. Throw laundry or stuff over the fence and the, and the towels or something comes tripping down into the backyard and Fido grabs it and starts playing with it and chews it up and if he's got a history of eating fabric, he could be in my operating room. Not good, not good. Um, wildlife is continually tripling to the backyard and doing what wildlife does, pee and poop. Normally, most of that is relatively benign. Parasites will come from them. Parasites can be treated, not really a disaster or a danger. Got to talk about raccoons though. If you got raccoons, I would figure call animal control and get rid of them. I know they're cute. I think they're darling. I remember going to mountain cabins uh, um, and just being delighted when one of them come, would come up to the window and something and Diane would be throwing them whatever it is uh, uh, and the like. I remember when I was a little kid, well before kindergarten, um, raccoons would invade the garbage cans uh, uh, back in our house at, on Parrish Avenue. And dad or mom would wake me up in the middle of the night and um, I don't remember what time it was, but it was definitely, they'd wake me up, we'd all look, look out the back porch window and put a flashlight on or put um, and um, the porch light on and watch them kind of sh you know, play in the garbage and the like. We thought that was great. We had to clean up the next day, but that was fine. Raccoon poop is dangerous. Raccoon poop is dangerous. It's got a roundworm in it that if you eat it or your kids eat it or your dogs eat it, it could kill them, period, bad. The only good thing about raccoon poop is that raccoons are kind of clean. You know, they wash their food and all that, but um, they go up in trees and they actually poop in the four cradle of branches and trees about six to 12 feet off the ground. So traipsing to your property isn't nearly as dangerous. If, if they're in a tree, you gotta get rid of them. Trust me, do that now, yesterday. So other things that change in the yard, You've, the yard is just fine whatsoever. Weather, wind, when the Santa Ana's blow, it brings all kinds of stuff in the yard. Um, most of which is trash, most of which is, um, um, but we get these big palm things that weigh, I don't know, I think they weigh 10 pounds. They weigh a whole bunch and a Santa Ana can plant one uh, somewhere not too easily. Uh, the winds and the rains and storms can move Oh, some things on your own property into a very unsafe place. The biggest thing that winds and rains and storms, any storm does, is open gates. Storms and weather opens gates. When we were at uh, the shelter in Newport Beach for 18 years, um, you could just predict that the number of, of intakes right after a storm was gonna go boing right off the scale. And the reason why is gates are open, dogs and cats are loose. Um, window screens uh, uh, pop open in storms and um, cat goes out the window. Not good and very, very preventable. So securing gates and make sure they're locked and, uh, and the like is very, very, very important, particularly um, now in Southern California, the windy season, the Santa Ana conditions are gonna come up. Secure all your exterior gates. Um, Another thing that we've experienced time and time and time again is that plants, pl you plant plants, you like the latch, you like the, uh, um, you like the way they look, you like the flowers, they smell good, they attract butterflies. We're now trying to, we're now planting uh, milkweed to attract uh, and support the declining uh, monarch butterfly population. So you have all these plants, what plants grow. One of the things that um, uh, Diane likes is the morning glories very pretty little flowers. They're pretty prolific. Uh, 
they'll cover up some ugly fences to kind of make things look great. Well, the, um, the morning glories aren't terribly toxic, but they've got chemicals in them that'll cause vomiting, diarrhea, and you know, if they ate about a bushel of them could be a problem, but just sig significant but simple gastrointestinal problems need to be a point, um, need to be prevented. I've discovered that the hard way. Um, I was always maintained the, the, the plants and things like that, but um, you know how things are. Um, the monthly surveillance uh, um, wasn't enough. These, um, we had puppies, they, the, the vines came into the, um, creeped over the fence and down where the puppies area. The puppies are, are eating this, um, um, the, um, the milk, not the milkweed, the morning glory stuff. I came home one, one night and um, uh, puppies have diarrhea, puppies have diarrhea, what are we gonna do, what are we gonna do? Well, why do the puppies have diarrhea? They change this, no, so I started them on medication and um, checked fecal samples and did all appropriate things. Uh, but what I did first was I walked out uh, into the, in the puppy area and looked around. I'm always looking around. Trust me, I'm always looking around. Um, but I, when I went outside, because they had just now gone outside, uh, they were like four weeks or so, and they weren't follow mom through the dog door outside and were just having a ball. Well, the morning glories had come down to, um, from the one side of the yard, which they were safe, uh, across the fence and down to where they were chewing on them, and that was their problem. So that was um, an easy thing to solve. This spring, we have orange trees sitting around the backyard and there's kind of little planters around them and they look nice and oranges and whatever. Well, um, I go out in the yard and I find, I'm exaggerating, but scores of foxtails sitting around. Uh, for those of you that aren't in um, Southern California and, and the West, foxtails are these little plant-ons, they look cute. Um, they look very benign, they kind of look like wheat. The problem is they got little um, spicules on them um, and they go one way, they catch in the dog's toes, they can get in the nose, they get in the throat, they, they go in the windpipe, they can um, uh, um, um, go down in the lungs, cause an abscess. Um, I've, I have had two reports of patients that have been in the ER from foxtails on their pulmonary tract, very bad, very dangerous. And they're just sitting there growing in the yard. And my team is, has no idea that, um, um, that they should be worried about foxtails. Why do they have no reason to be worried about foxtails? Because they weren't on the checklist. They weren't on my checklist. So I have a, I, um, I was able to add, I'm not quite sure I'm proud of being able to add, but I was able to add foxtails to my checklist um, just this spring. So one of the things that we're doing is we're doing the, these home prevention type uh, issues is to make sure that we're continually on top of things because things are continually changing. Things are continually changing. Um, let me check my notes here. So our pets get into stuff all the time. And we kind of know that, or the, the potential for knowing that. One of the most important things is to know your pets and know their behavior, particularly their past behavior on, on the has, their past behavior on getting into things and stuff. Years ago, Christmas time, people like to string popcorn and put tinsel on their tree. Very, very, very dangerous for kitties. Kitties think the tinsel is great. They eat the tinsel, they play with the tinsel, they eat the tinsel. Tinsel in the, in, in the intestinal tract creates what we call a linear foreign body. One of your foreign bodies require surgery nine out of 10 times, not good. The popcorn was worse. Popcorn's edible, it tastes good. And um, what was, so you got the linear board, foreign body from the string, but um, not necessarily related to Christmas and popcorn because when you string popcorn, you actually have string and a sewing needle and you string it. Um, and you put cranberries in it too. So those are all, little edible delicacies that are sitting around the tree. Most people don't do that anymore because they can buy all these uh, prepackaged ornaments, but tinsel's still out there and tinsel's still very dangerous. Christmas time tree, cat in the house, no tinsel. Just forget the tinsel. 
So, sewing baskets, crafts are in, COVID's in, crafts are in. Um, right now we're doing art at the house and not uh, too many crafts, but sewing, needles, thread, cats that like to play with uh, string toys and the like, they'll start eating the, the needle and the thread. Not often anymore. I don't know why, it, maybe people are more careful, maybe less people are sewing, but I can remember uh, dozens of kitties that came in with that um, had a very specific constipation type syndrome and they could have a, um, they would swallow a, a thread and there could be a needle inside them somewhere. They'll get the thread wrapped around the base of their tongue and start going down their intestinal tract. Very bad. So those of you that are crafting and, um, and sewing, sewing box, put away, needles go put away, some shelf, clothes box, kitties can't get into. I can't remember too many dogs with sewing needles. I remember dogs with a lot of fishing hooks and fishing tackles and the like. The other activity that our kids will do just any day of the week and twice on Sunday is um, um, out of boredom, out of mischievousness, out of their normal personalities, they'll just start doing things, particularly when they're home alone. Um, but a lot of families that have dogs and cats, I think you'll agree with me, they'll tag team each other. The cat will get up on the shelf, knock something off, the dog will take it, run with it, chew it up, shred it, may have a tummy problem, may just create a big mess around the house. Very preventable because once it happens, it's a self-rewarding behavior. The, uh, the dog sits by the, the curio shelf, uh, somehow communicates the cat, go up and, and knock that off for me, and they do that time and time and time again. Just normal energetic behavior, countertops, desktops. Um, if you've got chihuahuas, this probably doesn't uh, count uh, if you have ankle-sized uh, dogs that you can carry around, but Bernie's mountain dog tails are basically a counter height. 24-7, 365. And the tail can move plates, it can move uh, paper, it can move um, your cell phone, it can move your um, earbuds, anything sitting close to the edge that you just set down that you think is safe is not as safe as you think it is. So you have to be cognizant of where things are in the house in relationship to, um, to your pets. So knowing your pets, knowing their behaviors, is extremely important. So moving on to maybe the worst case scenarios, um, if they're eating stuff and they get in the stuff, maybe time to um, 911 urgent care, uh, get them to me, get them to the vet. The um, things like electric shock, electric cords are sitting around. Um, we try to uh, limit the number of cords uh, where the dogs can get to and block off the areas. You can treat the electric cords with uh, various things that are taste what um, that taste bad. Uh, various commercial products, such as I think it's called No Chew or Chew Off or something like that. There's dozens of them at uh, at available and the like. I use uh, I used regular scent Gillette Right Guard Men and Men Personal Deodorant active ingredient, you check it because every deodorant has a different active ingredient, I think. This has aluminum hydroxide. Aluminum hydroxide is 100% safe and not toxic, but it tastes bad. You know, it'll be have a residual that you can uh, get on um, electric cords and the like. Um, trauma to their face and their feet. They grab uh, something off the countertop that's glass and start chewing on it. Problems with their mouth. Something hits the floor, shatters, breaks cut paws. I've had, um, um, oh, that's a good one. I've had patients go through uh, windows. In the old days, the windows weren't tempered. The windows, uh, sliding glass doors were kind of dangerous. Um, they would go through them shattered. You could have glass everywhere. Now most of the, everything is safety glass. But one important tip, particularly if you're interesting, introducing a new pet into a home they've never seen before. Dogs run through or try to run through glass and or screen doors that they've never seen before. So um, if you move into a new house, new place, new anything, or you're just uh, 
um, and maybe, uh, maybe the dog's never been in the back bedroom before and it's got a sliding glass door. Take masking tape and X out, hatch out uh, the area on the door so that they know it's there and then they won't generally blast through it. I had a, um, um, an interesting experience several, not that long ago. Um, as you know, we, we breed uh, Bernese Mountain Dogs and uh, when they're two and a half, three uh, um, and are uh, finished with, and they've had two litters of puppies or the like, they, um, they generally will be retired into private homes. And so I was um, um, interviewing a couple in their home, took the, the, uh, uh, the girl down, um, doing fine around the house. And when, but when I walked in the front door, they had this nice fancy little screen that you touch and it moved over and you walked in the house. And that's how they let me in. And I said, that's not secure. The dog is going to blast through it. Let's close this door, which we did. And um, to make a long story short, it was the third of a series of inter interviews. The dog loved them. They loved the dog. I left the dog with them. So I left. And not 20 seconds later, I heard, I hadn't gone, I hadn't got back to my car. I was just walking down the street, back, I was walking down the sidewalk, back to the car. I heard this clatter behind me, and I don't even remember what her name was. She had just blasted the, the door and was sitting at my left side. So um, I don't know if, if an X on that door would have made any difference, but dogs blast through screen doors all the time. It's not rocket science. They're big, they're, uh, the screens are not made for things like that. So they ended up getting a, one of the security doors and the like so that they could leave the front door open and uh, there's a happy ending with that, but um, just beware. So um, disappearing materials around the house, eat something, could be, could be your hearing aids, could be your earbuds, um, it could be your cell phone, could be a plastic dish that had who knows what on it from the kitchen counter. Um, now with COVID around and cleaning chemicals uh, scattered around every place, dogs are grabbing cleaning rags, chewing them up, swallowing part of them. Um, how much of a problem is that? Those need to be all sorted out on an individual basis. Call me, call your vet, and um, make sure that the proper um, process and treatment gets instituted. Many of them need to be seen. Some of them need to have their um, uh, their stomachs pumped, actually. Many of them, they will need to um, uh, just be treated uh, conservatively with fluids or, or whatever. I threw an insect arthropod. Houses have insects and arthropods 24-7, 365. I don't care if you're in Alaska in the winter. There's a spider somewhere. Yes. And Fido or Fluffy are bound to find it and get it sooner or later. Those um, um, generally are related to big swollen faces and the like or swollen paws. Uh, they need to be treated as soon as uh, you discover things like that. The um, continuing with our saga, Dangers at Home. So we've, we've kind of gone through all of those, I have an exercise for you that you'll be able to do in the privacy of your mind right now and then repeat in the privacy of your home. The exercise is very simple. Close your eyes, visualize the first room that you're in in your house, could be the front door, you could start at the bedroom, visualize yourself two o'clock in the morning waking up. Doesn't have to be two o'clock in the morning but we're not talking about a panic exit here, but look around each room. Just visualize yourself in a room and visualize what you think is there. And then in your mind right now, walk around the house and visualize everything that you think is there. When you get home, repeat the exercise in real time from that room and the, the path that you just did right now and see if what you see with your real eyes was actually what you thought was there. I'll be willing to guess that you'll find some things now that 
you'll want to amend or remend. That's a very good exercise to do at least a walkthrough on a regular basis because what we want to add to your checklist is just that, a walkthrough through the house, through the property on a regular basis. I recommend monthly, um, but very, very important. Don't just put it on your list. Put it on the list and forget it will just be that, you'll forget it. I've discovered that most of these problems are easily solved. Not everyone, you're not gonna change the fact that Fido is gonna knock something off the, the countertop and when your back's turned with his tail or jump up and steal a beefsteak with a bone in it uh, uh, when you least expect it. But many, 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 many of these can be prevented. But why uh, most of them are not prevented? Why was my yard full of foxtails? My yard was full of foxtails because I wasn't checking regularly. So I don't think it's out of ignorance. I don't think people are lazy. I don't think uh, um, that's a, the reason at all. I think the main reason that all of these problems can occur and creep up is that we're overloaded with our schedules. We're overloaded with our workloads. It's too easy to forget and put it off. So the solution, the solution is to set a monthly reminder. I'm aware of two common ways to set reminders. The old fashioned way most families had, I'm gonna say still have, we still have a calendar. Um, that's kind of the common household calendar, put the events on the common household calendar. First weekend of the month, whatever is easy for you, Sunday after church, um, put a right walk to property and do that for the whole rest of the year. And then on the first Sunday of the month after church, walk around, but take the dogs with you if you want and see what's there, see what's changed, see if there's foxtails, see if there's stuff that the birds drop. I get stuff in the backyard all the time that real, literally, literally, literally falls from the sky. Just heaven sent it. And the crows and primarily the, um, the, um, the Amazon parrots uh, bring all kinds of stuff. They like fruit and they drop fruit and the like. I've got, I, I find pine cones in the middle of the backyard. I've walked the entire area and there's not a pine tree within a hundred yards of my house, but yet I have pine cones. So the other way to, um, to do this is digitally, modern science, put an, uh, uh, an alarm on your calendar uh, once a month to check the property. Put a, a monitor, uh, an alarm on your digital phone or on your um, computer thing or on your tablet, whatever is your most common thing. Best of all worlds, is do both, put it on the physical calendar, put an alarm uh, once a month, uh, and then you'll be good. So no checklist and safety at home should be left just to yourself. You'll need to have resources. Resources such as a list of poisonous plants, resources such as chemicals that you wanna make sure that the um, Four-footed kids are not anywhere near. Insecticides uh, in the same classification. And certain foods that you don't want to feed the kids, period. I'm not gonna go through those right now. That's um, um, way too redundant at this point. Um, redundant probably isn't the best word. There are scores of resources that list those. I'll have them in the description and notes below that you can access at your leisure, but you'll want to, for example, compare that list with what's really in your house. Let's say you got a philodendron in the corner. Don't quote me specifically on this example because I'm making it up right now and I didn't research it except for memory about 15 years ago. I had a split leaf philodendron and I discovered that the split leaf philodendron was actually toxic to cats and I removed it. But I've been more than 15 years ago. Anyway, so if you're not sure about the plant, 
very simple solution is to take a clip of it and take it to the garden center. I'm not sure about this, but Google, you might be able to take a picture of the plant and Google could tell you what it is. You can, you can take a picture of a building. You can step off of an airplane not, and not sure what city you landed in, take a picture of a building and the Google geolocator will tell you that you're in XYZ looking at such and such tower. I've tried it once or twice and it actually worked. I couldn't believe it. So you might be able to identify a plant, as far as I can tell, with, um, um, by pointing your Google phone at it. If that works, I'd love to know, let me know. So the resources um, are going to be in the description below and you'll have links to various things that I've used myself in the past. It's not exhaustive. It's not necessarily a recommendation that it's the best, but it's the ones that I've actually touched and used myself. Um, a special note though is for poison control. The poison control numbers are real. The poison control numbers um, are live and they definitely are the ones that, um, that we use when, uh, when there's a problem. You should put that number itself into your checklist, kind of in bold, put a box around it so that uh, it's utilizable. Uh, if you've never used that or had to use it, great. May you never have to use it in the future. But at 2 a.m., if Fido does eat the, the split leaf philodendron, um, you can pick up the phone and get some information. So that, um, that concludes dangers in the home for today. I, uh, I welcome your questions. I welcome your comments. I certainly welcome your feedback. If any of you um, need any help, please uh, contact me by email. The, um, uh, follow the links in the description below and we'll be able to continue our five-day challenge again tomorrow. With that, it's me, Dr. B, signing off. Have a great, healthy, and safe puppy and kitty day. I can't wait until I see you in the rest of the challenge. Thanks for joining me here today. And thank you for caring about your pet.